Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. You join me inside of the Range Rover. It's been a year since I picked this car up and it hasn't featured much on my channel. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to update you on what the past year has been like. And also just talk through some of the financial costs that have come with this car. So I guess firstly, I'm so happy it's cold because it means I can wear my hats again. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you all know I love a woolly hat. So you best believe they're coming out. And secondly, uh, I'm not sure if the audio will be better. I hope it is because I'm using a different mic setup. I do apologize. My last video, the audio was a little strange. I think this microphone that I've had for a number of years now is starting to give up on me. So we're trying out this one instead. But yeah, I mean, in short, only good things to say about this car. It has been quite expensive um, to maintain. But aside from that, in terms of just driving and what we've needed it for, it's been fantastic. It's such a great car to have for children. Um, I certainly feel a lot more um, at peace knowing that my children are being ferried around in something this big, especially around here. Some of these country lanes are a little sketchy, um, particularly at night. So again, just being in something a bit higher up and a bit more chunky, just, yeah, just gives me a bit of peace of mind. But taking the children out of the equation to actually drive this car is great. Like the driving position is really nice. Um, I seem to change my seat all of the time, but I like the fact that I'm higher up. I can see plenty of the road and there is just something that comes with driving a Range Rover. You know, it, it, it has been said before, but it is like the ultimate waft wagon. You can just kind of casually waft around. Um, I'm not a stereotypical Range Rover driver. I do use my indicators, but just being able to waft around and it's nice. It's nice. Parking is a bit of a challenge. Um, especially if you live in an area such as mine, going into a lot of villages, etc., trying to get this into a regular space is hard enough, but some of them smaller car park spaces are a little slim. So it can be challenging, but again, not a big negative. Um, it's not the quickest, there's a lot of lag, but this is only the three liter SDV6. So it's quick enough, certainly when it gets going, it picks up nicely, but it's not, I wouldn't consider it to be nimble. Although when you are on it, it does corner really well. And something that has transformed the way this car corners, in my opinion, is the new tires. So we recently put on the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 SUV uh, tires, all four, and it's, they're great, like they look great and the car handles a bit better. It could just be my driving, but I think the tires are doing a lot of the legwork and they're great. Um, you can really, really push this into some corners. It does have dynamic mode, so sport mode. It makes the accelerator a little more responsive, but it just firms everything up. So um, again, that, that can be quite useful around here anyway on some of these roads with nice windy corners etc but it's never going to be as nimble as something like a McCann Turbo S or whatever you know or even the SVR for that matter. Talking of which we did look into maybe upgrading this because after the first year I think um, I was just a little conscious of how much money we'd put into the car so I thought is it time to change and I don't think it is yet but I'm trying my best to persuade Courtney that we should get an SVR so watch this space. Um, I definitely don't think that we'll go, not backwards, but smaller in terms of family car. I just can't imagine us doing it. She, Courtney, I was about to say she, Courtney keeps going on at me about, do we need a car this big? Should we just get an Evoke? Like, it's just like, do you know what I mean? Like, come on. Um, but anyway, slight tangent. In terms of driving, it's great. It's a bit juicy. You know, when you fill it up, I think it costs 110 quid to fill up. Um, but actually those tanks will last a good amount of time. Again, I don't want to sound like an absolute pleb, but we don't pay that much attention to the diesel. We just like fill it up when we need to. Um, so I can't give you any kind of reasonable miles per gallon, but I think on the, on the computer at least, it says that it's about 37. So it's not terrible for a car of this size and weight, but it's obviously not the most economical either. Um, so what I thought I could do is 
do a quick cut. Let's do a walk around of the car. We've, we've had a couple of knocks here and there. I'll talk you through what the exterior looks like. And then let's pick back up in here and I'll talk about some of the costs that come with this car. Okay, so let me do a quick walk around of the car. Hopefully you can hear me. It's uh, really windy out here today, typically. But there's a couple of things to point out. Firstly, we have had a couple of knocks in the car, unfortunately. So a few minor marks. We've got one here on the rear, which is due to be repaired in the next couple of weeks. That was my fault because I reversed into a building. We have a scratch on the back door, which I'm pretty sure will polish out, but that was somebody's jacket or something like that. Annoying. And then we have another on the front, which is here. This one's a bit of a mystery because it wasn't me, but Courtney is also saying it wasn't her. So we'll leave it at there. But that's also being repaired in a couple of weeks. Aside from that, there's no marks elsewhere on the car. Actually, I think I may have spotted a chip in this door maybe. Looks like someone's opened their door on the car. Can't find it now, but there's somewhere. There's somewhere a mark on here too. But aside from that, it's all good. I still think the car looks great. Um, I love these. Like, I think they, they really do look good. And them tires as well. Those tires do just look good on the car. Like I said, we have moved over to the Pilot Sport 4 SUV. And I mean, they just look good. They really do look good. The wheels are filthy at the moment, so is the rest of the car, but it's a Range Rover, it's meant to be a bit dirty. No rear tints for the time being. I have thought about it, but I don't know. I, I think I quite like the fact that there are no tints. I think it suits this color. And also, because we've got the black contrast up the top as well, I wouldn't want it to be too much. So I don't know, we'll see. Got the old, the old school children's blinds or whatever you call them these things got these up they've been around for years these things they're great though they do the job uh, just the one car seat in the back at the moment the other one i took the car seats out the other day because i took all four tires to the tire shop and that's what's great about these is the seats fold down and it's quite flat and you can get four of these tires in the back with no problem so it is a utility vehicle I also put my bike in the back here sometimes, or even my golf clubs. Weirdly, my golf clubs are probably the most awkward thing. They fit, but it's always just a bit of a pain. Um, back seats, at the moment, the passenger seat is a little worse because my older child likes putting her feet all over it. Younger child isn't quite big enough to do that yet, so give it time. And then up the front here, we don't have, so there's nothing wrong with the interior. It is a bit dirty, it needs a bit of a clean. However, the one thing I will mention is we had the car for maybe two months and I bought a Mars milkshake and I asked Courtney if she could open it for me whilst I was driving and she did. Handed it back to me and I was like, God damn, why is like, you know, it's one of them sport cap top things. It's like, geez, why is the sport cap so tight? and just pulled the entire lid off of the milkshake instead and chocolate milk just basically went everywhere. So we've tried our best to get this out. Please, please don't judge me. I need to get the car detailed inside properly. But it has gone back to Range Rover since that happened. They also try cleaning it, um, you know, make of that what you will. Needs a good hoover in there, but, and also this. I try my best to keep on top of it, but you know, it gets to the point where you just give up. Um, apart from that, nothing else to report I, other than I, I think it, it just looks great. Like I don't really know what else to say. Um, let's jump in the car and let me just go over a couple of other things in terms of cost. So what does the car cost us and what have we had to pay out in terms of servicing and maintenance, etc. So let's jump in and, and let's get into that. Okay, let's get to the nitty gritty. How much does this car cost? Okay, so um, we did finance this car. I did consider buying it, but then I thought, no, it's probably not sensible to just put all that cash into this car. Um, so it was 57,000 pounds and it was 
uh, two approaching two years old when we bought it. So it's a two thousand late two thousand and seventeen car. So yeah, you do the math. Um, it had twenty. Actually, I think it had a bit less. I think it was about nineteen ish thousand miles odd when we bought it. Um, it's now done forty two. So despite the fact that for half of the year that we've owned this car, we've not been able to use it much because of COVID, the first half, we definitely made use of it. We've driven it to Paris a couple of times. It's been to Amsterdam a few times. It's, yeah, it's been all over the place. Um, and we haven't had any mechanical issues per se. We haven't had any breakdowns. We've not had anything just randomly go on us. But we did have a rather surprising bill that came with the first service for this car um, in our ownership. Yeah, there was a lot. And I think what transpired was that it was actually the first service for the car full stop. Um, but we'd had a couple of things investigated. A few things wore out, so some bushes, etc., needed replacing. The brakes all round needed replacing. So some of it was just wear and tear and a bit of bad luck. But I think that bill in total came to just under 4K. Um, and then the tyres are like 220 quid each, something like that. But at the moment, Black Circles do have a deal on these particular tyres um, where if you buy four, you get 160 quid off. So they were 700 quid nice um so that's it in terms of like extra money that we've had to put into the car monthly figure wise is a little bit less than my car i don't want to say the specific figure just in case i get told off for revealing too much again but it's a bit less than my car per month um not much so for those of you who may remember what my car costs there you go um and then insurance wise, so insurance wise, we actually use a company called Paceward to insure all of the cars under a single policy. They're great. Um, so it's insured under that. I, can't, I don't know how much this actually costs to insure because it's just like a one policy for all of them. And it comes with, so uh, the policy on a yearly basis, I think is 2,200 for all, uh, for all of the cars. There's someone behind me, bear with me. just move out of the way try not to run this horse over might as well just see it actually um so uh, but but i think to be honest um you know i knew this wouldn't be very economical obviously went into the deal knowing how much the car would cost monthly wise i did put quite a chunky deposit into this i put 10k deposit into this um, just because we wanted those monthlies to come down a bit. Um, and yeah, I think aside from that, you know, from the money aspects, it's not necessarily been a negative. Um, it's just been a really fantastic car to have, to be honest. Like, I think it's more for me than it is for Courtney. Like when we bought this, we got it for Courtney, but I think it was one of those, I think it was one of those, it's for Courtney, but for me scenarios. Um, I love driving this, like it's such a nice break from the two cars that I have, like the S3 and the RS3. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I love driving them too, but there's something about just getting into this and just, just casually driving, you know. Um, I love it. And I really do like the, the spec of this car as well. I know it's not one of the more, you know, full on specs like the autobiography or anything like that, but actually it has everything that, that we need. Um, I think it looks nice as well. The colour with the contrast roof, etc. And you know what, in here, I don't know that you could ask for much more that we would need, at least. Like, the glove box, we don't need a fridge. And it has Apple CarPlay. It has the wider screen as well. Like, that was one thing that just had to be a must, was the wide screen. I do not like them screens where it's got, like, the little buttons down the side. Like, to me, man, damn, they just don't look good. So it had to have the wider screen. But aside from that, it kind of has everything else. And yeah, like the pan roof as well. The pan roof is is great addition. I suppose that the lining being this cream color, it would have been nicer if maybe that was a darker color, but that's probably the only thing I would change if I could inside. Um, and then the, the, uh, everything else is kind of like marginal in my opinion, um, but it's been great. Like. Hopefully this video has made some sense and you've 
found some of it useful. Um, I cannot vouch for this car enough. I absolutely love it. Um, it is the ultimate family slash daily. Um, and, you know, guys, please don't take take it any way. Like, I'm very fortunate and happy to be able to have this as a daily. I'm not saying that flippantly. Um, you know, like, honestly. Uh, it, it sounds really strange, but, uh, you know, when I was in that period of time where I was really struggling and I was going through that, that dark place with anxiety... Sounds really weird, but I was having these dreams about wanting a Range Rover. And my want for a Range Rover, weirdly, came from a photographer that I just admire called 13th Witness. He had one. And I was like, oh man, can you imagine how dope it would be to just have a Range Rover and just drive around and go to like different areas to take photos, etc. And I was dreaming of owning one. Like, And when I say dreaming, not so much like... Not in a way of like aspirational dreams, like, oh my God, could you imagine owning a Range It's more like actually having dreams whereby I owned one. And then it's like you fast forward like six months or whatever, six to 12 months and we got one. It's just, it's a funny old thing, life. It really is. So went off on a slight tangent there, guys. Hopefully that made some sense. I suppose in summary, we absolutely love this car. Um, it is great. Honestly, it really is. I cannot recommend them enough. But I think I'm going to finish up the video there. I don't want to waffle on for too long. I do have another video coming very soon. Another update on the S3 because we've managed to do a little bit more work on it since my last video. I've got some spaces on there now and the car is looking mean in a good way, in a tasteful way. Um, also add an upgrade to the stereo, which is like is funny. Um, but I'll get into that in that video. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you'd like to know anything specifically about this car, please do just let me know. Always happy to answer any questions. And yeah, we'll give it another year and maybe it will make another appearance. But thanks for watching, guys. Peace.